Okay, have a think about restriction enzymes. Yeah. Now, <coughs> these are also known as restriction endonucleases. Yes. Yeah. Now, how do they evolve? They evolved as a defense by bacteria. So here's your bacteria, and here's its single circular chromosome, and here are plasmids. Now, pl bacteria have, from the very first time they evolved, all been attacked by viruses. Viruses are called bacteriophages. These are viruses that have your classic lunar lander virus shape, and in it injects some viral DNA, which takes over the the protein synthesizing machinery of the bacteria okay. makes more and more mini viruses and these virus particles then explode outwards kill the, the bacteria and infect other bacteria okay. now not surprisingly bacteria think this is a remarkably bad idea yeah. so over time they evolve a defense mm. and the defense is a enzyme just an enzyme like any other enzyme so it's an enzyme that is obviously, like any other enzyme, a blob of protein and that blob of protein has a cleft in it and that cleft is obviously known as an active site. Yeah. Now, just like any other enzyme, this is an enzyme that has a substrate and the substrate in this case is DNA and like any other enzyme, the active site is a cleft that is complementary to the substrate and it's complementary to the particular substrate. Now what's interesting about this is that what's complementary to each different restriction endonuclease is a different specific sequence of DNA. Okay. So for example, if you have the sequence G, A, A, T, T, C. Yeah. Now, the restriction enzyme that we obtained or was obtained from the E. coli, so E. co, yeah. from the R1 plasmid of the E. coli, cuts between the G and the A of G, A, A, T, T, C. So this is known as the recognition site. And the recognition site is a sequence of four to six bases. Yeah. And obviously this is the correct shape that it fits into the active site. Okay. And then the restriction endonuclease cuts here between yeah. the sugar and the phosphate in the sugar phosphate backbone. Yeah. Now, the point to make is that in a piece of DNA, this sequence is palindromic. Or symmetrical this if you read it this way this is on one strand that runs 5 prime to 3 prime on the numbering of the carbons okay. remember that the other strand is anti parallel so the other strand is going to run 5 prime to 3 prime remember numbering of the carbons on the DNA's I'll go through that again with you in a moment I'm confused um, that is then going to run what's complementary to C? G. Wait, which which What's complementary to T? A. What's complementary to T? A. What's complementary to U. T? U. U C. T T C. It's not U, it's DNA we're talking about. Oh DNA. Yeah? So what we've got here is we've got the same sequence. So one strand we have G A A T T C, yeah. and the other strand going the other way we have G A A T T C. Yeah. Oh my God! So now what's going to happen is that the enzyme is obviously going to cut at two places. Okay. So it's going to cut between the G and the A there, and on the between the G and the A here. So what this is going to achieve is a cut here and a cut here. Mm. Now. Obviously the bonds that are between the um, complementary bases, these are weak hydrogen bonds. Yeah. These bits here at the back are strong covalent phosphodiester bonds between the sugar and the phosphates. So these hydrogen bonds will then break of their own accord. Yeah. And now what we're going to produce is, move down, 
can be one strands. So we'll end up with these bits here, which will have your um, overhanging or sticky ends. Now what this means is if we cut different DNAs with the same restriction enzymes, okay. then you're going to produce ends which are complementary. Okay. So if you have, say, a length of human DNA and a bacterial plasmid, if you apply the same restriction enzyme to the human DNA as to the bacterial plasmid, well, it will cut the human DNA where it finds the recognition sites. Yeah. And it will cut the bacterial DNA where it finds the recognition sites. If you mix the two together, well, the bacterial DNA and the human DNA may well hybridize and form complementary hydrogen bonds with the human DNA joining up with the bacterial DNA. Okay. What you then have to do is to add another enzyme, which is DNA ligase. And DNA ligase will join together the sugar phosphate bones, backbones, oh, okay form the phosphodiester bonds between the sugar and the phosphates okay. which join the whole thing together. Now, the last point to add is there are, there are many, many, many different restriction enzymes. Mm. Now, each one of these different restriction enzymes cuts at a different recognition site. Okay. Mm. Recognition sites tend to be four to six base pairs in length. Okay. They can be either um, give you sticky ends or they can give you blunt ends depending on the sequence of the site. Okay. Um, for instance, something that look, had a sequence AATT, -T, then on the other side would be AATT. -T. And if it cut between the A and the T, i.e., if it cut there, then it would cut the same place on both sides and it would give you a blunt end. So, so that can't attach them? Well, it can, but if you use an enzyme to stick bases on the okay. end. But that's just an example of one, one that you can do it like that. Okay. okay. Now, there are many, many different restriction enzymes that have many, many, many different recognition sites. And that's restriction enzymes.